Hey guys. Um, hopefully you've all finished the in-class exercise uh, discussing the pros and cons of online uh, counseling, multimedia, using the internet. Um, you know, I wanted to discuss my findings and give you and Kathy time to hopefully compare and discuss this fairly new and still not fully understood modality. Um, we'll start off with a Bill Clinton quote who said, we're into a whole new world with the internet. Uh, and whenever we sort of cross pla another plateau in our development, there are those who seek to take advantage of it. You know, I think that's pretty fitting for um, what we're discussing here. Uh, today, more and more clinicians are using the internet, uh, social media, and online counseling to reach out and support clients. Uh, this is done with email, this is done with blogging, audio recordings, video chat such as YouTube, Skype, and other conferencing systems as well. Um, if you do an internet search for online counseling, there are over, you know, way over 250,000 hits. Um, some researchers are using the term computer-mediated uh, communication to describe and categorize, and categorize uh, these methods but I'm still going to use the term um, online counseling. Um, with all the different formats considered, practitioners have an obligation to consider the best interests of the client and still adhere to the same legal requirements, uh, the same values and the same ethics in a one-to-one, -one, face to face uh, counseling session or a therapeutic relationship. Um, so as this is a relatively new modality that unfolds, it's necessary what, uh, you know, still do no harm, uh, create a therapeutic relationship, uh, ensure confidentiality, and keep our clients' best interest in mind. Um, so the same values, the same kind of ethics, just there's a couple of things to look out for, uh, I'd say. So one of the most important risk management factors in dealing with online counseling is knowing the true identity um, and location of a client in the event of an emergency, such as, you know, self-harm or threatening of others. So, you know, if you're getting into this form of counseling, um, you know, it's, that's probably one of the biggest things to look out for and one of the biggest things to keep in mind um, for safety reasons. Um, so you guys have discussed some positives, um, some pros, some cons about this. I'm going to go over some of my findings. Hopefully they match up with yours. Um, hopefully you guys have found some or um, created some that I didn't know or wasn't aware of um, to kind of give you a nice well-rounded uh, picture of online counseling. Um, some of the positives that I'm aware of um, and that I found and wanted to share with you um, is that healthcare over the internet is rapidly growing. Um, it's evolving, making it more available for people. So this is great. You know, this has great potential for, for serving more and more people that might not have access to services in their hometowns. Um, instead, they can have access to these services uh, right from their house. Um, so online counseling can benefit clients because it's more convenient, uh, creates a little bit more flexibility, uh, it's more cost-effective, there's, you know, a counselor won't have to rent out a physical space. Um, you know, the cost of renting out a physical space tr obviously trickles down to the client, and they end up paying for it in the long run. Um, whereas, you know, online counseling, you know, you just need a computer um, and an internet connection. So that's nice. Um, although most agree that internet counseling cannot be considered traditional psychotherapy, uh, there are benefits to those consumers who are reluctant um, to seek traditional therapy. So online counseling or online groups may be beneficial for the stereotypical male. Um, you know, the guy that doesn't want to share his feelings, the guy that doesn't want to walk into an office. Um, you know, it might be, it might be good um, to uh, talk about their feelings online and then hopefully, um, you know, or an anonymous situation and then hopefully work up to uh, doing face-to-face -face or our one-on-one -on -one counseling session. Um, so online counseling offers the anonymous context, 
got mosquitoes. Uh, anonymous contacts for expressing emotions and personal concerns. So not just males, but you know anyone that kind of falls into that category um, that might not be able to express it in person or in a one-on-one -on -one setting. Um, so online counseling would um, benefit those who felt more comfortable expressing themselves in writing as well, rather than verbally, uh, and take the next step face to face. So someone that feels more comfortable, you know, typing out on GChat or you know, in a um, a group chat setting, would be would benefit from this. Um, you know, they'd be able to express themselves through the keyboard than having to be um, confronted by you know, someone or be in the presence of a, another person, which can, you know, be overwhelming, especially those with, um, you know, a variety of anxiety disorders. Um, online counseling can benefit the counselor as well. So, um, you know, especially in a text-based environment, whether it's chat, email, um, text, um, you know, it gives you, it gives you a whole, um, a document or a record to review, um, so you can review the statements, which allows for the sessions to be that much more focused. Um, it allows the counselor also time. So, uh, you know, especially with, I guess, with email, especially, but, um, you know, any really, really any form of text um, gives you time to respond to someone's comments. So you can craft the, the perfect, what you feel as the perfect response if you're trying to create a therapeutic relationship or you're not sure on how to, say something in the moment without offending, you know, it'll give you that time to, to get your thoughts out, reword it, and then, and then hit the send button. So that's, you know, a fairly beneficial factor. Um, let's see here. Uh, online counseling allows the clinician to access hard to reach populations, such as those in rural or remote areas where the individual does not have access or may be impossible for them to reach services. So this could include clients with certain disabilities or chronic illnesses that render them uh, immobile. So this could be an individual with anxiety disorders, uh, agoraphobia, uh, social anxiety, um, you know, anybody that uh, really doesn't want to go out into the community or want to be exposed to, um, to the out wor outside world. And, um, so it'd be nice to, for people with certain disorders to be in the comfort of their home, um, in a relaxed setting, they'd probably be more open. They wouldn't be very um, as anxious as they would uh, having to leave their house. Um, online counseling can also be beneficial in addition to those who have already provided a traditional one-on-one -on -one face to face counseling. So someone that's uh, you know been in one-on-one -on -one face to face counseling but wants to use online counseling for, um, you know, did they, uh, are they on vacation? Um, did they travel for work but still want to check in with their counselor? Uh, maybe their counselor has moved and they want to continue seeing the same counselor, continue that relationship. You know, these would, uh, you know, this would be a very, really, really huge um, beneficial thing for, for uh, clients. Let's see what else we got here. Um, some of the negatives. Um, that wraps up the positives. So some of the negatives, um, got a couple possible negatives for you. Um, inaccurate diagnosis or ineffective treatment due to a lack of behavioral clues, uh, body language. Um, so the lack of nonverbal information that you get in a one-on-one -on -one face to face setting that, uh, you know, you're able to read someone, you know, read their body language and find out what their body language is saying, which is a lot more expressive generally than, um, you know, people's words. So you do lose that. Um, and that's, that's huge. Um, you know, you gotta, if you are going to do this, you gotta find a way to work around that. Um, another negative is confidentiality and privacy cannot be guaranteed online. Um, counseling, offer online counseling, and it's uh, at a greater risk, especially when members of counseling group engage in social media. So this could be through any form of online counseling. Text-based communication technically leaves um, everything behind. You know, every written transcript of the entire counseling session could be uh, could be pulled up and found online. Video conferencing also can leave videos behind of entire sessions. Um, another negative: the therapist's duty to warn or protect others is limited, with clients' decreased proximity 
or out of state proximity. So clients that are suicidal or suffering from extreme anxiety or depression might not receive immediate attention without someone in close proximity. Um, you know, they're in a different state, they're in another building, they're, um, you know, they're not in the same town for someone to uh, reach out to, uh, for someone to send help to. It's a, you know, another hurdle that someone's going to have to jump over to help somebody. Um, the therapist's duty to warn and protect is pretty important. Um, so if you do go into online counseling, you have to find a way to um, set up a plan and set up um, a way to work around that. Um, there's also a possibility that online service providers may not be qualified to provide services and can misrepresent themselves and their qualification. Um, qualifications. Uh, a study in 2006 showed that less than 10% of, av of available e-therapy providers were licensed psychologists, less than 10%. So there's a lot of uh, fraud on the internet, as everybody knows, um, whether it's you know clients or clinicians. Um, there is a lot of fraud, so buyer beware. Um, let's see what else we got. Uh, minors have the ability to masquerade as adults seeking treatment and enable other clients to misrepresent themselves as well. So clients would be able to fabricate their sex, their ethnicity, their location, and their age. Um, ethically, this is a problem when psychotherapists are unable to validate whether the person they're speaking with is an adult who has the legal right to consent <coughs> To treatment and is not a minor. Um, you know, this happens all the time online. It's something to look out for. Um, with a written medium, such as instant messaging or email, there's a potential that someone other than the client could log on and engage in a session with the therapist, not knowing that they that this person has taken on their client's identity. So there's that risk. Um, Online counseling makes it difficult to develop an effective therapeutic alliance with a client who has never been in a traditional one-on-one -on -one, face to face setting. So I mean you lose intimacy. Um, you know, while I'm not in class, you know, I can't hear people's comments, I can't hear what they're saying, um, so I'm not able to react to it. Uh, you know, there's a big difference when someone's not there in person and you're either watching a recording or you're um, you know, talking to someone over the phone or chatting with them. Um, another thing to look out for is technology failure. Uh, I think we've all seen the blue screen of death. Uh, when this happens to a computer and everything goes blank and you freak out and you don't know what happened, um, you know, if that were to happen with you counseling, what about the person on the other side? You know, they're not going to see the blue screen of death. They're just going to see, you know, disconnect symbol. Um, you know, what are they going to think? What's going through their mind? Was it something you said? Was it something they said or recommended? Uh, are they offended? Did they, you know, this can damage or diminish the therapeutic relationship that we're constantly building with our clients. Um, so that's something to think about as well. Also, working with an individual in a different time zone could also have uh, negatives, um, especially if there's an emergency and the counselor is not available at that time of day. Um, you know, different time zones, different countries, different cultures, different languages, you know, these can all affect the delivery of services when you're seeking um, a counselor out and you, you know, you guys are, you know, speak different languages, you're from different cultures, you, there's a barrier there that you're going to have to work around to that's not just, um, just not just location. Um, so that's what I have for positives and negatives. Um, you know, I want to keep going and just conclude with a couple of things. You know, there are those who feel that with adequate preparation, um, support, resourcefulness, um, counselors can find that the challenges involved with online counseling is less daunting than, than imagined. You know, there, there are ways to work around the negatives. Uh, there's a way to work around the cons. You know, embracing the positives and, um, you know, finding a way to work around those obstacles. You know, we can do it. Um, I think it's going to happen, and I think it's going um, to be leading the future. So here are some topics, some advice, 
uh, questions to ask yourself when considering online counseling. Um, obviously, you want to review and acquire appropriate competencies that are related to the modality you are considering. Uh, you also want to find, uh, you know, ask yourself, is this field, um, is this modality, is this, um, you know, form of counseling right for you? Do you have the typing skills if it's through email? Um, do you have the speed and the accuracy to create a therapeutic relationship and keep that conversation going? I know you're able to keep up with the other person. Um, you know, do you need to take a typing course? Um, you know, are you familiar with the various computer and internet technologies, particularly uh, like data storage? Um, you know, are familiar with uh, clinical record confidentiality? Are you able to understand and use emoticons, yes. Are you able to use LOL properly? Um, SMH. <sighs> um, you know, there's a lot of people that aren't there. Uh, if you're not, you know, there's courses out there. You can uh, immerse yourself in the online world and figure out all these TLAs, uh, three-letter acronyms. They're everywhere. Um, so, you know, these are all used online. you got to be able to update yourself um, as times change online, uh, just and immerse yourself into the community. Um, so another thing to think about is, you know, how does one communicate warmth, care, genuineness, and openness over the internet? Uh, is it even possible for you as a person uh, to create a therapeutic relationship over the internet? You know, would you be able to do that? Uh, for some some people can't do it. Some others can. You know, some even fall in love. Uh, hopefully not with your client, but that's why we're taking this ethics course. Um, so hopefully you guys covered that already. Uh, all right. So also what you want to do is take into consideration uh, your traditional methods that you use, uh, the skills that you have. Uh, do your best to transfer your one-on-one, -on -one, face to face skills in the online community, uh, social media, you know, working with people over the internet. Uh, it's not always easy. So, you know, you really want to find out what you have for skills, sharpen those skills, and do your best to take those skills um, so that they can be seen by the client through um, internet counseling. Uh, you need to ask yourself if this modality is right for you, is it right for the client that you're serving? You know, someone might contact you online and uh, you know start looking for your help but is your help really the best you know it turns out they live you know above six counselors and they could just go downstairs um, and create an appointment um, where they might struggle online and they might not have the typing skills they might not have the skills to carry out a therapeutic relationship online um, you know it would be your job to find someone for them find um, someone for them to reach out to in their hometown, in their community, um, you know, if that's possible. So finding out, is it right for you? Is it right for them? Um, and taking those next steps, if it is or if it's not, and just finding out what's best for the client. Um, you'd also want to uh, re-familiarize yourself with the ethical guidelines that have been developed that relate most to the style that you're using. And so if it's uh, social media or... Uh, group uh, chat rooms or over the phone, you want to re-familiarize yourself with the ethical guidelines that have been developed that relate uh, most to the style. Um, sorry, I already said that. Re-familiarize yourself with uh, the legal issues and state licensure regulations and policies that govern your specific practice. Um, so is it legal for a mental health practitioner to, who's licensed in one state to treat somebody else in another state? whether it's over a phone or over the internet, you know, is that legal? Is that allowed? Um, you got to find these things out as well. So you, uh, after doing all this, you know, you also want to create ground rules for the client when using group work and social media. You know, one, you want to avoid posting pictures, avoid posting comments, uh, avoid any type of confidential information about other members online. Um, you know, if someone has a website and, or a Facebook page, a counselor does, and the client goes on and, you know, doesn't know how to use Facebook that well and 
types on your wall, you know, hey, is my one o'clock appointment still good? Thinking that they're talking to you privately, and but the, everybody else can see it. You know, you want to you want to create some ground rules for your clients so that they're informed. Uh, you know, many people will lack technological skills and knowledge to protect information like that. Um, that's intended to remain private. So, you know, just a little fact in February of 2012, there were over 845 million users on Facebook. You know, it's inevitable that um, mental health professionals and clients are among those users. So I can guarantee that the majority of them do not know how to access the privacy settings on Facebook. Uh, Facebook doesn't make it that easy. It's kind of, it can be kind of difficult. And every time that you update Facebook, uh, they generally go back to uh, the base settings, which is open. So you're constantly having to, um, you know, reset your settings to private, uh, to the privacy settings that you wish. Excuse me. Um, to ensure client verification when you're chatting with somebody or emailing somebody um, after you've built a relationship with them, you, there are ways around that to make sure that you're talking to the right person. You can use code words like James Bond or uh, numbers or graphics or other nondescript um, identifiers, something that only the two of you will know so that you know anybody can get a name and a social security number. Um, and act as though they are the client or they are the clinician um, and breach confidentiality. So there are ways around it. You just got to get creative. Um, clients must be educated enough to protect their own files as well and must be aware of the risks involved with online counseling. So, you know, just being straight up with them, um, letting them know the risks that are involved, um, what they need to do to be safe, what you need to do to be safe, and coming up with a plan with them. Um, you know, also have a conversation up front with your client, continuing that conversation, um, you know, especially about the blue screen of death or if you're experiencing technical failure and the plans for how to respond when such an event occurs, because that's going to happen. Um, you know, it's something that you guys can both agree upon. An example would be, um, you know, if it cuts out, the plan would be to wait five minutes and then the clinician calls the client. Uh, if the client doesn't answer, I'm going to leave a voicemail. Um, when the client gets, you know, in touch, they're going to give me a call back. You know, it's important to discuss this procedure with the clients to prevent misunderstandings, um, you know, or a breach of confidentiality. So, um, you know, keeping that, um, keeping that um, thing together. Keeping the sorry, it's one in the morning. Um, <coughs> keeping that therapeutic relationship intact. You know, you don't want to um, prevent, you know, you want to prevent a misunderstanding with those just those small little nuances that, that happen when you're working online. Um, you know, it happens all the time. There's, you know, I'm sure it was a pain in the butt to, to get this video up. Uh, I'm sure Mark did a great job. But, uh, you know, as he knows, there's always something. Every class, some little glitch happens, and it's annoying, it's obnoxious, but you get it up and running, and it works. Um, and it can work for you. It can work for everybody. Um, so hopefully, you know, people will continue using online counseling. You know, it's in its infancy, um, but I, I think it has, it has a really bright future, and a lot of people are going to access it. Um, and just remember, you know, nothing is 100% safe in this world. Um, nothing, obviously, is 100% safe online, um, but with the proper security precautions, um, informed um, clients, informed clinicians, um, you know, this, all the information can be transmitted online. All the information that is transmitted online can be just as safe as um, stuff that's in your filing cabinet at work or at home. But, you know, obviously, it's not 100% safe there, but... You know, we all take our precautions, we put our locks on, we take, um, you know, different codes to get into things, passwords, uh, set up firewalls, um, you know, so with all of the cons and negatives of online counseling, I think if you're creative enough, um, you can get around all of them and create a safe uh, therapeutic relationship with, uh, with your client. So I hope to see you all next week. I hope you guys have a good class. Or not next week. I'm not, I won't be there. 
Um, but next month, and I hope your internship is going well and you guys get to eat all your mints. Have a good weekend.